Hello there lovely ones. Recently we've been going over how to find the equation of a cubic function based on certain bits of information. Now this question tells us that the equation of a line that is a tangent to a graph, and there's the function of the graph, is 2y plus 3x is equals to 6, and this happens at the point where x is equals to 1. What's interesting about that is we're not told the y coordinate of that coordinate. So we know at the where x is equals to 1, this will be the equation of the line for the tangent, but we don't know what the other coordinate is. So maybe that'll come into play. We're asked, and let's find a different color. How about purple? We're asked to find the values of a and the values of b based on all of this information over here. You have to be careful that you don't overthink this. Firstly, this is the equation of a straight line. So let's just put that over there. And as we know, a straight line has the standard form of y equals mx plus c. Is this equation in that form? No, definitely not. So let's rearrange it first by taking the 3x to the other side. And remember, we don't change what it is, we change what it's doing. So over here, it's adding 3x, over there, it's subtracting 3x. Now we're going to take 2 over, on this side, it's 2 times by y, which means on this side, we're dividing by 2. And I'm just going to divide both terms separately immediately, because you're now old enough and ugly enough to get that right in one thing. So, this is the equation of the straight line. It's not the derivative. It's not the equation of the cubic function. It's an equation of the straight line that happens to be the tangent of the function where x is equals to 1. Now let's use that equation to figure out what that y-coordinate is going to be, because obviously this line lies on where x is equals to 1, lies on where this line is. So it's possible to work out what the y-coordinate is going to be just by substituting that in. 1 plus 3, uh, which gives us y has a value of 3 over 2. Yes, I did that in my head. So therefore, this coordinate is actually 1 and 3 over 2. This is going to be really useful as we go along with the problem. But let's get back to this formula. Now we know y equals mx plus c. m is going to be the gradient. Let's change colors. m is going to represent the gradient of that line. And as we know from previous discussions, the gradient of the line can be determined by using the derivative of the function. So let's just find the derivative of this function first. That becomes 6ax to the power of 2 minus 2bx. Now at the point where x equals 1, the gradient is going to be minus 3 over 2. So we're going to uh, swap g, uh, the gradient, oh, <laughs> the derivative, make it equal to n negative 3 over 2, and rather than putting in x's, we're going to put in the value of x that we're given. So now we have 6a1 squared minus 2b1. Now we just need to solve for b or for a. Problem is, there are two variables. And as soon as we see two variables, we know that we're eventually going to end up with some kind of simultaneous equation. So that's an important skill for this question. The easiest way to simplify this equation would actually be to multiply through by 2 because then we're getting rid of the 2 in the denominator, and because we don't change what it is, we change what it's doing. Negative 3 divided by 2 means when we move it over to that side, we multiply it. So it now becomes negative 3 is equals to, well, 6 times by 1 is 6, times by 2 
is 12a, and 2 times by 1 is still 2, times by 2 is 4, and of course we're subtracting that, so that's 4b. Why don't we simplify this a little bit more? I'm going to make it minus 3 plus 4b. Might as well make a the subject of the formula. Remember, it doesn't actually matter which variable you make the subject of a formula. Whatever makes you feel better, that's what you should do. Now, because we know it's going to be a simultaneous equation, I'm just going to label that one immediately. Questions like these are far easily, more easily done if we check off the information we've used. So we've in, used the information about the straight line, and we used it to find the gradient of the straight line, and then make it equal, or the derivative equal to it. And we also used it to find the point on the Cartesian plane where the straight line goes through, as well as where the cubic function goes through. We've also used the derivative. We've made it equal to minus 3 over 2, which we got from the straight line. And then we substituted in 1 from this information over here, so that we could find a is equals to something. So this is going to help us with our next step. Now looking at everything, we've used this. We've used this. We found the derivative and used it. So what's the one bit of information we haven't used yet? That's this over here. The g of x is equals to 2a cubed minus bx squared. Ah, I left out the x over there, but you'll get over it. So let's move across on my page so that we can do something else, have some more space. We're going to now figure out what our a and our b will be equal to. If we substitute 1, and let's just make sure I've got this right, 1 and 3 over 2 into the equation, which is my y value, so 3 over 2. So now, oh, let's just tell you what I'm doing, because that's good practice. Subs, blah, 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 into g of x. Do I need to write out the rest of it? Nope. I just need to state that that's what I'm substituting it into. So now I've got 3 over 2 is equals to 2a, and what was x? 1 cubed minus b, x was 1, squared. Okay, so now it's pretty easy to solve for. I've got 3 over 2 is equals to 2a, who would have guessed, minus b. I'm going to make b the subject of the formula because that would be the easiest, but now that I'm looking at it, I don't really need to because a is already the subject of the formula there. So I could say this is equation number two, and let's just change color again so you can see I've got different thoughts going on. I'm going to substitute one into two. So that means everywhere I see an a in this equation, I'm going to replace it with minus 3 plus 4b over 12. It'll look ugly, but it'll work, trust me. Is equals to 2 times by minus 3 plus 4b over 12 minus so now that we've got one variable, we can solve for it quite easily. You may want to pause the video at this point and just calculate this for yourself. Find out what the value of b is going to be. You see, I'm going to do one of those cooking show things where I say, look, I prepared this earlier. You know when they take out the baked cake from the oven, even though they just put it in? But anyway, I found out what b was by doing this calculation, and I found out that b is negative 6. So now, if we move across, we can figure out what a is. Let's change color to show that we're changing thought. We're going to substitute b equals negative 6 into either 1 or 2. 
whichever one looks nicer. I think number two looks nicer. So I'm going to do that. And I say 3 over 2 is equals to 2a minus minus 6. So that's going to be 3 over 2 is equals to 2a plus 6. We take it to the other side and it becomes 3 over 2, which is the same as 1 and a half minus 6 is equals to 2a. Uh, what's 3 over 2 minus 6? That's mm, 4 and a half minus 4 and a half. But now we need to divide it by 2 to get the value of a, which means a is going to equal negative 9 over 4. It's not so bad, is it? Well, there we go. We have found the value of b, and we have found the value of a. And yes, it has been a complicated process, but that's what makes it so interesting. So in the, the question, we were given the equation of the straight line, which was the tangent to the curve, and we are given the value at what the straight line intersects with the curve, or at least the point where the tangent goes through. We were also given the equation of the tangent, and with all of this information, we needed to find the derivative and then make the derivative equal to the gradient of the straight line. After that, we also needed to find out what the y value of the coordinate was so that we could substitute that back into the curve, the function. And that led us to a simultaneous equation, which then took us to our answers of b is equals to minus 6 and a is equals to minus 4 and 9 over 4. The only way you can get good at this stuff is to practice, practice, and practice. So you must, must, must practice. Much love.